Hello and welcome. My name is Reed. Today we're going to be tearing down a deuterium lamp to show all of its inner workings. I won't be covering the power supply as deuterium lamp power supply teardowns are available elsewhere on YouTube, but I wasn't able to find any teardowns of the lamp itself, so that's what I'll be focusing on today. Deuterium lamps are useful for getting at the UV spectrum of light. These lamps are commonly used in optical devices, such as spectrophotometers, HPLC, film thickness measuring devices, and any other device that needs to have broad UV light source. These lamps can go as high energy as 110 nanometers, which is further than other common light sources, such as halogen or fluorescent bulbs, or even other arc lamps, such as xenon. This strong UV emission spectrum paired with different optical filters, can be used to create an excitation source with specific wavelengths of light. Um, most often it is used with a monochromator so that the light spectrum can be scanned through to find the peak emission of a sample in question. Deuterium lamps, like most light emitting lamps, have an anode and a cathode. These are an arc lamp, so unlike incandescent bulbs, the filament is not the source of light in deuterium lamps. Instead, an arc is created from the cathode filament to the anode. Um, this image shows an overhead view of the deuterium lamp, and it's based off of some other diagrams that I've seen, but I adapted it for the exact lamp that we're gonna be tearing down today. The anode is a small square plate um, that's at the center of the casing and carries a negative charge. The cathode carries a positive charge and is located in the anterior part of the lamp. The cathode is not always just one straight wire, but sometimes a resistive loop of wire that's capable of being heated by passing some current um, through it before ignition. After the heater has been on for some time, um, typically 10 or, or 20 seconds, a firing voltage starts the arc lamp. The firing voltage ranges between 300 to 500 volts and can depend on the model of the lamp. Um, the normal operating voltage, however, is about a quarter of that. Um, can range from 50 to 200 volts. Um, in the, down in the description below, there will be a few links of some examples of um, these data sheets with some of the, the voltages um, that, that go along with those. Now, because normal glass blocks most of the UV light spectrum, these lamps are almost always encased in quartz. The quartz keeps all of the deuterium gas trapped in a lamp where the arc can excite the molecules into a higher energy state. As the molecules relax back down, they emit photons of light, which create the emission spectrum of the lamp. I happen to have dropped this lamp and broke the quartz casing, which is why I'm dissecting it. Um, this model is made for an old but popular optical spectrometer. The cathode is easily identifiable inside the lamp. It is the frontmost wiring coming up through the base of the tube. The anode is hidden by the metal casing. Uh, we'll tear into that later. On the cathode, you can see resistive wire heating elements um, that is coiled inside. This is to preheat the filament. There's some sort of metal separation that exists between the two filaments in the body part of the lamp. I'm not totally sure why this is. If anyone knows, please let me know what the purpose of this part of the casing is. Uh, I'm sure it's intentional since I've seen it on multiple styles of lamps, but I'm just not sure what it's used for. Um, if you happen to know, please comment below. I'd love to see the answer. Inside the cylinder is the anode, and sitting on the anode is a square plate. Uh, I'm not totally sure the reason for the square plate, but I know that most of the geometric design elements of the bulb are used to produce um, even, bright light coming out of the bulb and increase lamp life. Deuterium lamps are typically rated for about 2,000 hours, which is impressive. One of the main failure modes is the small cathode heater wire burning out, but another common mode is that the metal coatings will sometimes evaporate and create a filament coating on the quartz casing. So yeah, this was the internals of a deuterium lamp. I hope you learned something. I know I did. Thanks for watching. Bye.